Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, how I would be painting this beautiful uh, pendant and uh, these earrings. These are fired and um, clearly I mean you know you can make out that these are much more uh, lighter and uh, I think a lot of you have asked me you know why it's necessary for uh, you know something like this to be fired. Um, plain simple uh, to make it more durable. Uh, the fact that if the clay is not obviously fired, um, the moment it touches moisture, it is going to begin to disintegrate. As simple as that. So you can clearly make out that these are much stronger and they are not as delicate as you know because if I was to do this with just any amount of um, you know raw probably unfired clay this would have probably come into two by now but this one's um, a lot more sturdier and um, you know this is typically why it needs to undergo a firing process and in the right manner necessarily uh, so let's begin firing the I mean sorry let's begin uh, painting this now um, I am typically using um, acrylic paints for today and uh, I am using the shade of acrylic black, um, the Liquitex uh, gold and um, um, a, a milky white again uh, you know in this kind of a shade. So this is what I am going to be using. Um, I particularly love this combination what I am actually doing today. Um, uh, it's a um, it's basically an anti gold uh, with hints of black and uh, white. Um, so what I have here is I've actually mixed a little bit of black and let me tell you when you're trying to make antique gold try to be extremely extremely conservative in using black paint because it's a very powerful color and it tends to blend and probably overpower the other color uh, in this instance is going to be gold um, very easily so I take like extremely little black and a good quantity of gold and mix and you can see the transformation that it already gets just with that I've added about uh, five drops of water to this so this is good a good amount of fluidity for me for the paint and let's begin to paint this uh, because there are grooves I try to use a slightly smaller brush this is a size 2 um, just so that I'm able to get the paint um, you know all in and because if I'm using a broader brush, there is a chance that I might not really get into the uh, smaller grooves of these, uh, you know, the, the pendant. So this way, um, it's a little bit slower, but at least you get in um, and you cover all the spots where uh, there is a lot of carving. So the design is, um, I would be typically painting the whole pendant in this antique gold everything including the gungru beads and I would be highlighting uh, the designs uh, with the help of gold I'm um, sorry with the help of uh, white and uh, black and this is not this is not like a titanium white it's not like a bright white color it's um, it's more off-white I would say off-white but it'll look pretty it'll look quite white when it actually dries out and um, I'll also be using a little bit of black. I, uh, I'll probably see. I might not use the black if I just like it because I generally like um, uh, two light shades as well in a pendant. Um, so, you know, sometimes just the gold and um, white look great together. So... Go on to apply multiple coats if you think it's necessary. Um, I have uh, mixed this to the uh, appropriate dilution. I think it's thick enough. It's it's rather it's it's rather um, you know how do I put this? It's it's not too thick and it's not too thin. So it's just right for me. So uh, just one or two coats is enough for me. I slather on a very good amount of uh, paint usually to the stick beads when I'm doing it this way and I try to constantly make sure that I'm there's a there's a movement in the stick beads just so that they don't stick to each other 
because when they stick they obviously would peel the paint and that's another that's just double work again now um, now that both uh, the pendant as well as the earrings are painted and also dry completely dry and dry to touch that's what i mean um, it's time to basically get on to the next stage and the next stage typically what i would do is um, although i i i said that i might use both um both black and white uh, to uh, highlight the designs. I might actually stick to just white because when I thought about it, I just thought, you know, this would probably be appropriate for something like, um, you know, a Kerala sari, um, especially, um, you know, me being a Malayali, um, that that combination is absolutely stunning, uh, especially of our uh, Kerala Kasavasari, which has the um, the white and the gold uh, with the gold uh, borders. So this would probably be something more appropriate to that. So let me not actually add black and just stick to adding um, like this this kind of a white. So here, what you see is you know just a little bit of white mixed with very little water, uh, not much. Um, because the, the paint was already quite uh, fluid for me. So I have a double zero synthetic round tip brush over here and that's exactly what I'm going to use to highlight the designs. Let's get on with it now. And when I say highlight, the idea is literally just to, um, you know, highlight few bits of the carvings and for example, like these you see how that just lifts the entire piece up. I mean, till then, you couldn't really see the uh, dots, but now you're able to kind of, you know, see it a little bit more clearly. Now I have actually put the dots in both these, um, you know, both the earrings as well as the pendants. It's already looking so pretty, isn't it? not much of a highlight and try to be as careful with the lines as you can um, you know try to make the brush as pointed and sharp in the tip just so that you get a nice fine neat line just like that You see that every time I'm actually dipping my brush in the paint, very, very, uh, very little paint in fact, just so that I get a nice even coat each time I do, I do that line. You go. You see that? Let's do the rest as well. There you go. I've highlighted the whole uh, pendant with these beautiful, thin, um, fine white lines. Um, that's kind of, um, you know, highlighting the carvings. And um, I, I really like the way this pendant has actually turned out because it's 
it's so appropriate and it takes the light so beautifully um you know the fact that it's just two shades and um it's just predominantly gold and um obviously has like white very fine white lines which is which is just absolutely uh bringing out the beauty of the carvings in this piece so you know I'll, let me let me get on with the earrings as well just maintain the same set of thin white lines and you want to make it a point to kind of dip your brush each time just so that the coat is nice and fine and there you go i have completed both the um, pendant as well as the uh, earrings don't these look absolutely beautiful i mean they are so simple and yet uh, they look so elegant especially um, you know now that i have that um, kerala saree in my mind uh, you know i just i just think this is so appropriate uh, uh, for that kind of a for that kind of a saree for that kind of a that kind of an attire um this is it this is it everyone i really hope you like the video extremely simple uh you know i think this is um this is a nice way to use colors and not uh, just use all the colors that you think is nice um you know i think uh, this is why combinations probably help um i think you can always draw amazing inspirations from the from the beautiful um traditional sarees and um, in fact even the offbeat ones um you know which are which are coming up lately and i think they provide such uh, a vibrant um and um, such a, such a uh, such a varied combination of colors actually they provide like vibrancy there are pastels there are um, you know really bright colors um florals and it's just so many things that you can uh, draw inspiration from in terms of color combinations i really hope you like this one everyone if yes then please like the video and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for watching